All right, so what we're gonna talk about today is the mouse that nobody's talking about, the SteelSeries Rival 5. Why isn't anyone talking about this mouse? 59 bucks right here, packing a lot of features on it, and I honestly think why no one's talking about it is because, well, number one, it's not 50 grams, there's not holes in it, and it's not a puny, tiny little mouse. What's going on these days? I know 2021, this world's getting a little weird out there, you know what I mean? But again, not every single mouse needs to be this teeny tiny little hole filled cheese grater of a mouse. You know what I mean? I love a bigger mouse. Like, come on now, you gotta be some big mouse fans out there, you know what I mean? And again, the other thing is like, why I think this isn't being covered is like, I think gaming mice are turned into like a community. You know what I mean? If you wanna look at that good or bad, it's more or less like you can look at like the keyboard community, where it's like they look down on your keyboard, they look down on your mouse now. Audiophile community, you know what I mean? It's kinda of like, I don't like that. I don't like that, cause again, as a reviewer or just a consumer, you're gonna overlook some awesome products like the Rival 5 here. So anyways, as far as in your box right here, well, there's not really much in there, but I do like how Steel Series changed around their packaging. You know, it's not that peel open now, it's just kind of like pop open, kind of like what you've seen with Glorious, right? Then you popped it open, and then you're gonna get your little manual over here, basic setup, you know, whatever, plug it in and it's good to go, right? But then of course, you're gonna get your mouse. And this is what we're gonna focus on here, not the packaging. So talking to Rival 5, number one, let me show you the dimensions of this guy, right? It is a bigger mouse. It is. And I really like that. Now, is it like jumbo, like Death Adder vibe? No, it's really not. I mean, I can get my hand on this guy. I can get it back there and get it into the back of my palm. Really comfortable, by the way. Get a nice claw, relaxed claw or anything. Or I can even get a fingertip. Now, when I do get fingertip over here on the back uh, left side, it's gonna hit the side of my palm, at least back here. But again, I can really dabble with anything. So again, I'm kind of relaxed in a nice slow paced um, kind of game mode right there. Bam, pull it back here if I get to get some fast action going on. It really works out for many grips. Now, while we're talking about shape here, before I start talking more or less about specs and the features of the mouse, I, again, I want to get this shape around here for you guys. So the number one thing you're probably going to be compared to is the Steel Series Rival 600. Is that right? The 600 and 650, if I'm thinking about that right. Of course, you got the wired and wireless one, both pretty much the exact same, right? So this looks just like it, right? You might think a eh, budget option here, you know? But let me tell you, as far as the shape and feel in the hand, they're quite different. Sure, they're fairly similar, right? As far as basic size right there, but the shape is different. Uh, with the Rival 5 here, it kind of swoops in on the side a little bit more. Not sure how well you guys can catch that. On the uh, 600 here, it kind of swoops out on the side. You can probably see fairly good right there. Again, swoops in, swoops out. Now, on the inside here, as you can see on the Rival 5, it definitely swoops in here more towards those other buttons, which we'll talk about right there. And again, it just grips and fits into your hand really nice. But yeah, they do look very similar, but I wouldn't say that's the best comparison. I really wouldn't, as crazy as that sounds right there. So anyways, let's get these guys out of the way. Where are we gonna put them? I got so much stuff over here. So anyways, what would I say this is very similar to? And it is crazy, because I'm testing this other mouse right now, which I can't talk too much about. That'll be coming next week for you, but I'm gonna give you a quick glance here. The Rocat Cone Pro Air, or Cone Pro whatever. This feels just like that in the hand. Slight differences, which again, I can't talk about too much here, but it's crazy. It feels a spitting image in the hand right here. Again, going from test to test, I'm like, wow, that's crazy. So again, spitting image as far as feel in the hand right there for me. All right, so let's go on and dive a little bit deeper into the Rival 5 right here. Number one, you all know I love a solid product and you get that right here. No creaking, no cranking, no flexing, no rattling, no nothing. It is absolutely solid and you feel that in your hand. You really do feel a quality product in your hand. Now, as far as the cable coming up here, they say they have their new cable. I mean, heck, you can just look at it up here. It is a stiff one, it really is. Now it's thinner than some of the other ones I've seen, but again, still, I mean, clear as day. Not a good cable here. You can see we have that lead coming out. And again, you don't get that initial drag or anything, but yeah, unfortunately, even in a bungee, I didn't notice the cable right there. But going towards the buttons, 
right here, the one and two, they're using TC micro switches, which are for 80 million clicks. And let me tell you what, they are stinking crispy. And before we get into that sound test, as you can see, yeah, you got a bunch of extra buttons right here. This little one up top that you see on some other mice before that usually comes out as a little nub right there. This one's kind of in there. So you can press it up front with your thumb or over there on the side. Then your two side buttons. And then this button right here, it's not actually a button you press in, it's down and up, right? Really cool right there. Then of course your DPI scroll wheel in one and two. But anyways, let's get this sound test real quick. Now, as you heard in that sound test right there, the buttons are incredibly crispy. One nice thing I, I do like that they updated compared to the other, like the 600 or the 650, whatever, is that DPI button. As you can see how raised up it is here now, and then they recessed it down. And that thing used to always bug me quite a bit right there. But again, other than that, the uh, one and two, and even the side buttons are really cool. Because again, talking about that grip that I talked about before, whether it be the fingertip, relaxed claw, or that palm even, your finger sits, again, your thumb sits right in there and you can actually access those side buttons perfectly fine. And then bam, I just touched the top right there, the little silver button. I can just hit that. Now this is just like a little side button thing. You know what I mean? You're not going to be using that much. So don't be looking like I don't need all those buttons. It's just kind of like the access that is there. And it's really cool. And we're going to pull up the SteelSeries software so I can show you here. But what I found out using it as is, I'm just gaming with it, right? Just regular one and two, and then my side buttons, just like a regular mouse. So you might be thinking, well, I don't need these extra stinking buttons, exactly like what I thought, you know? But in SteelSeries software, it was so cool, especially with this side button. I did these as my audio controls that I can use in game, right? So I'm in my game and I can crank my volume up by pushing this up, or then pull it down by pushing it down. Then if I wanna mute my volume, I set it to that button right there. That was so stinking cool. So again, it's just, it's such a convenience, you know, a mid game, my hands on the keyboard, I'm on the mouse, bam, cranking my volume up if I wanna hear something, you know? All right, let's settle down, I'm in between rounds right here, you know what I mean? Me using a 65% keyboard, or if you're using a 60% keyboard, who wants to go in there, function, and then whatever thing, or function control, and then your volume things right there, you know? Or go down, pull up windows, and get into your volume settings there. Such a pain, right? So think about that, if you're using like a 60% or 65% keyboard, it's so cool right there. I absolutely love it. Like it was so stinking convenient and awesome. Really cool here. Now, as far as underneath the mouse, we are using a True Move Air sensor. And then the feet here, not PTFE or anything, but they do stick out quite a bit and they are rounded off the edge. So as before you get it on the mouse pad, you don't get any drag. Again, the only drag you're gonna get is from that stinking cable there, but I mean, you can hear it perfectly smooth and it glides. Pretty nice, it really does right there. Again, I don't notice any drag with it. All right, so let's go on and pull up the SteelSeries software right here. And as you can see, the mouse does have RGB, pretty cool RGB actually, pretty much just like the uh, 600 and 650 over there. You got your logo and then your zones and then the scroll wheel. Really cool, now I got a bunch of lights on here, but uh, anyways, it's very nice and bright. So anyway, let's go and click on the Rival 5 and I'm gonna show you some of the things I was talking about with the buttons. Hopefully you guys can catch this here. So we're gonna go to the left side of the mouse. You see you got B7 and B6, which again, it's two, they're counting it as two. You got B7 down, B7 up for that side button there. And again, it's real cool, just click on that here. And you got all sorts of different ones you can choose from as far as keyboard buttons, macros, media buttons, mouse buttons, yada, 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 all sorts of stuff. But again, talking media, you got volume up, play pause. So again, it turned out really cool as far as being able to adjust those to, they don't have to be for gaming. Maybe just a shortcut on your PC that you need right there, pull up Discord or something like that, bam, to have it there. Again, me with my media controls, it was so stinking awesome. So again, really cool to be able to dabble with those extra buttons. I'm usually not an extra button type of person on my mice. I like it just as minimal as possible. But again, these, these ended up being a whole lot of fun. They really did. Um, coming over here to illumination, as you see, you have all these different zones you can pick. And again, you can set each zone to a different effect or a different color right there. How do we get this out? Close it out. So anyways, you got logo, scroll wheel, and then each zone. Come over back here to 
there we go now we'll get it pulled back up but again anyways you got different effects different colors as far as different uh you know which direction you want it to go so all sorts of rgb effects in there again back to settings as far as your dpi as you see you got five levels but you can remove these if you want as you see you just go there bam click and remove click and remove and then have whatever you want set my pen's really not working that great but anyways, that's pretty much your basic settings there as far as the RGB and the DPI and everything. Now, there is one stinker, and this is a prime example of me plugging it right here into this laptop to do this video. On my computer over there, I had my settings saved when I plug it in and the engine opens without my account or anything, just opens, my settings will be saved on that PC. So I came over here um, to this one. Let, let's start right here, right? So let's even say I'm on my PC and I close out engine all of my settings go away. As far as RGB, not my buttons and my DPIs, those save, but the RGB uh, does not save right there. It'll go right into rainbow effect. So you need the engine open for that. And that's that's a stinker. You might be like, whatever, man. A lot of products do that, but honestly, a lot don't. The only ones that really do that, which you all know I can't stand, is Razer and Razer Synapse. And that's a real stinker because SteelSeries used to be very good at putting onboard storage on all their devices. I don't know why the RGB is not saving anymore like their older devices. I don't know if it costs more if it would increase the price, but that's just a stinker. Because again, I don't want the software open and I want my mouse to stay red. So nitpicky, maybe, but again, for me, a stinker. All right, so I'm going to combine the conclusion in my actual time with the mouse, how I enjoyed it, how I did it and everything into one right here. But as you're catching through of the video, it's not what we're seeing a lot with current mice, right? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I bet a lot of people out there are going to say it's a bad thing, like it's got to be lighter. What I would say, the downfalls of this mouse, number one, the software not having an onboard storage for the RGB or whatever. Some will say nitpicky. I think it should just simply have it. The cable stinks. The cable clear as day stinks. That's the number one thing that's bad about it. Because again, even in a bungee, as you can see right here, it's still a stiff one. You know what I mean? So that really stinks. But those two things, again, we talk about it at 59 bucks. Is that budget maybe right above that budget line? You know what I mean? But it's still packing some really awesome features. Every mouse doesn't have to be 50 grams, guys. Like, let's not put gaming mice in a class of what they have to be. Not everyone's playing FPS games. You know what I mean? I play a lot of Call of Duty and talking about my time using it, would this be my primary Call of Duty mouse? No, it wouldn't. Is it too heavy for that? No, it's not too heavy, but I do feel the weight difference again compared to other mice. You know what I mean? As far as that fast pace, is it the weight difference or that cable? Maybe a combination of both to be honest with, you know what I mean? But again, talking at 80, what is it again? 85 grams. That's not like end of the world, guys. Like, I mean, if you can't lift 80 grams and it's straining your arm right here, I mean, you don't need to be sitting here gaming. You're, you know, you don't need to be gaming. It's a different priority you need to be focused on if 85 grams is straining you. My perfect weight is 70 to 90 right there. But yes, I would love it. It would be amazing if they can get this to 70 grams. That would be really cool. Would that compromise the build though? I'd rather a solid product over some flexy little creaky you know, 70 gram mouse. I don't know. I would like to see that with you here. What I really like to see with this, because again, this is a really fun product here. I'd like to see it wireless at this weight though. I don't want to see it wireless and get up to like 99, 100 and something grams. I don't want to see that. You know, I'd like to see it wireless and maybe stick around the same weight. Then I'd like it. Put it at like 80 bucks. Hey, you got me right there. You know what I mean? But all in all, I do like the product. I really do. It's really fun to use with the up and down button there and then that as far as our media controls, you know. Again, would I say it's the best FPS mouse? No, I really wouldn't. Do I think it needs a little tweaks here and there? Yeah, I do. But do I think it's worth $59? Yeah, I really do. It's a fun mouse. It really is. It's a quality product. And I'd recommend you give it a shot. Again, it is fun. Don't class mice into this one category. Please don't make it like this snooty little elitist product like a lot of other products have become. That's just, that's not fun. 
That's not fun. But anyways, thank you so much for stopping by and watching my review on a Rival 5. I hope I answered some questions if you're looking at this mouse or just curious about this mouse right here. Again, it's definitely worth a chance right here. Uh, don't put your shaders on to some products, like I said through the whole video right here. It's a pretty fun product. But again, all in all, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to some future tech videos. I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now.